Hello, beautiful people. It's your friend, Nicole, your electrologist, electrolysis goddess. And I am here to wish you a happy 2024 and to also talk about a condition that is exceedingly rare and I just had a surgery on called thoracic outlet syndrome. Many people know thoracic outlet syndrome from the neurogenic standpoint, meaning affect, affecting the nerves in this very small area that holds the nerve bundles that go from our head to our neck and down our arm and across the chest. So if you're a weightlifter, if you are a swimmer, a softball player, a rower, someone who did a lot of upper body work, pitchers, softball pitchers, many of them develop this condition called thoracic outlet syndrome where their hands start to go numb, they have numbness and tingling down the arm because this delicate bundle of nerves that passes through a channel called the brachial plexus become compressed. The nerves become compressed and so then that fires the nerves and they get tingly, numb, irritated. In some very rare cases, someone has compression, not just of the nerves, but of the arteries that deliver blood flow from the heart to the arm and up through the neck to the head. And that is what we call arterial thoracic outlet syndrome. In other rare cases, someone has a compression of the vein, the subclavian vein, which brings blood back to the heart. So when you have arterial compression, it's the oxygenated blood that comes from the heart that's going out to the body that gets stopped by compression of something here in the brachial plexus. In very rare cases, there is an anomaly, it's a genetic defect that people are born with, which is called a cervical rib, meaning above all your ribs in the cervical spine, there is another rib underneath the clavicle and above the first rib. And in my crazy Nicole case, and is a wild case in general in the world, in fact, it is among the rarest of the conditions to not just have thoracic outlet syndrome, but have compression of the subclavian vein, subclavian artery, and the neurogenic structures by virtue of the cervical rib. Thank you very much. I am one of those people. And in all my life, I had all these compromises. My hands would always go numb when I would do yoga anytime my arms were out and over my head. I used to play softball, I used to row, I was a swimmer. I did all the things that make that compression worse. And in my 30s, I was practicing a ton of yoga, which when you have your arms over your head, right, what was happening to me is my hands would go totally white and then they would get super numb, like just as I would fold forward, they would be totally numb, the numbness, like though you could feel the blood rushing back. Well. Fortunately, I found out that though I was compressing the subclavian artery, which can cause a stroke, which can cause heart problems, which can cause um, ischemia, meaning huge blood flow problems down the arm, up the head, into the neck, though I was compressing the artery and the neurogenic structures and to a lesser degree the vein, anytime my arms were out and up, I didn't cause an aneurysm, I didn't have a clot, which some people, that's what happens to them. But knowing that I'm getting older, 51, and I want a healthy life ahead of me without all this compromise, the numbness, the tingling, the whiteness of my hands, the pain, the neck pain, the headaches, I decided to get it done. So I met with several surgeons all over Los Angeles, which is where I live. And I identified whom I thought was the best surgeon for the job. And his name is Mitchell Siroya, and he works at Cedar sinai in Los Angeles. And Dr. Siroya told me about the risks. He told me about the benefits. He told me that my case is clear cut. 
And he told me that when he gets in there, if he feels we also need, because he is a hand surgeon, he's a surgeon of the neurogenic nerve structures in the body, but he also specializes in this syndrome of the thoracic outlet, that he would bring in the vascular specialist if we were concerned about the impact of my rib, which we were taking out, on my subclavian artery and or vein. And lo and behold, in the course of my surgery, which I just had four days ago, we I had a team of the two specialists at Cedars, the vascular chief and the head of reconstructive and plastic surgery in the neurogenic capacity watching out for the my nerves, the phrenic nerve, which could get injured in this process and it controls your breathing, the nerves that control all the feeling, everything that goes down your arm, your neck mobility, all of those things. And I was in fantastic hands. I had my surgery on Wednesday. It's now Sunday. Um, my pain is, I would say, all things considered, quite minimal. As you can see, I have a drain. Let me show you the goods. Um, the drain is getting taken out tomorrow, day five. And I have a scar. It will be, it will be a scar here, a scar here, a scar up here. That's where, sorry, don't want to show the boobs. Uh, the drain here and here because we released my pectoralis minor muscle, which was always so tight and I didn't really understand why. Well, in fact, it was the compression that was constantly happening. We released the anterior and middle scalene muscles, which were also always so tight. I did physical therapy for years. They just couldn't even get in there. They couldn't even mobilize those muscles because they were so tight from the constant compression as someone who not just works with their hands, as you know, during in my field of electrolysis, but someone who has been athletic their whole life. Um, little did I know how, like I knew I was always in pain and I knew that I was always compromising my structures by virtue of this, but I was afraid to do the surgery because I didn't know what the outcome would be. I didn't know if I would, it would be worse. You know, the side effects would end up being worse or if I would have a life that I never even knew before with more comfort, more flexibility, more strength, um, and saving myself from future damage because my nerves were getting so compressed that the damage had become chronic. And when the nerves stop firing altogether, it becomes permanent damage. And so my nerves were still firing, but they were firing very um, intermittently. Obviously I compress when my arm would go up and then the nerves would have to refire. So all this is to say that in my case, as someone who's experienced arterial thoracic outlet syndrome, some venous thoracic outlet syndrome and definitely neurogenic thoracic outlet syndrome, I went forward and I had just the cervical rib removed, not my first rib, the cervical rib. I had a decompression of the anterior and middle scalene muscles, the pectoralis minor muscle. And then Dr. Soroya had to basically make sure that the entire brachial plexus was intact and in good working order to stitch me back up and Put me back on the road to recovery. So I share all this in the hopes that I can provide insight, information. In my research, there's very few videos out there of people who have shared their story. I hope that I can be a resource of education as I like to be with my electrolysis work. And if you have questions, if you've been suffering, I don't know that I can help, but I can certainly share how my healing process goes and what happens along the way. This is side one of what is going to have to be two sides. So I'm going to do side one and then we'll have to do side two in the next several months. I hope to do it within the year. Um, but I will say already 
in a four day period, when I'm doing these exercises that I have to do, I feel the space, I feel opening that I never had before. I can move my neck better. I have, I can, I can feel that my, even my shoulder mobility is already improved because that squeezing of this rib that I was born with that never belonged there, this bony overgrowth, um, was just pushing down on everything every single time I tried to initiate movement. Um, so that is my story so far. Day, f we're basically on day four. Tomorrow will be day five. And I'll try to, on the course of the Electro Yogi channel, provide um, ongoing updates of how I heal and recover. And if you have questions, I will do my best to answer them. Right now I can't work, so I have more time than normal. So I will do my best to answer your questions. And I thank you very much for listening. I hope any of you who are suffering in this world from this condition can find the proper resources. Surgery is always, I would say, a last resort, which is why for me, it took me, you know, I discovered that I had these extra ribs in my 30s and I'm 51 now. So it took me a while and it didn't get to a crisis point, but it was a constant source of pain, discomfort, and um, I would say a minor level of disability. So to the extent I can be of service, I hope to be. And in the meantime, stay healthy and have a happy, healthy day.